we have tonight is going to be Ray Daniels. But before we get started with that, I'm here live on the streets. I'm, I'm really in this city with the people, man. So right now, this is called What's Happening. So I'm about to see what's happening with the people here live on Edgewood. How you doing today, sir? What's your name? Carlos Neal. Carlos Neal, y'all. And what branch you here today? Man, look, like... ATL supports ATL. Like Scotty, you know what I'm saying? I met him a couple weeks ago. The good energy is just so, so it's contagious. And yes. so so I just want to come and support one of our very own. Yes, I love that. I love that. You heard what he said. You know, it's just the energy, the vibe. Like, he don't even really know Scotty like that. He just met him last week, but he here him now. So that's what's happening, man. That's the vibe y'all gonna get here. Um, live on Edgewood, but everybody get this thing started. Y'all tune back in on what's happening. <laughs> Yo, man, stop playing. Stop playing, man. Hey. What up, man? This your boy, Scotty ATL. And you are live on Edgewood with my co host, Erica Duchess. What's up, man? Make some noise one time, man. Okay, today, man, I have a very special guest. He's one of my personal homies and mentors, but he's also a CEO of Radar. He has his own podcast, his own show called The God Show. He is also a business exec. Man, he's worked with names like Rihanna, Sierra, Lotto. Look, and he's from the ATL. Put your hands together for my dog, Ray Daniels. <laughs> Can y'all make some noise for Ray Daniels again, please? <laughs> What's up, man? How you feeling, man? I'm happy to be here. I don't know what I was coming to, but it's, it feels good to be here. It's love. Let's go. Man, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. I, I, you probably don't remember this, though, but you know I met you at a studio, actually, from the beginning, when I, you was managing Rock City. Rock City. I remember, I remember as early as you go back to when me and you is when TJ's DJ was managing you and I tried to sign you to Epic and that was 2013. Stop lying. Yeah. Remember you I came never do that because I was trying to get LA. you to be my manager. Nah, I met you. I, shut, shut up. You didn't know I wanted you to no. be. No. I swear, bro. Nah. I wanted you to be my manager. I put that on everything. I met you through TJ when he was your manager and I tried to sign you to Epic and you had that record. It, it kind of had like that West Coast bounce to it. And LA Bust loves it open. Music. Bust it open. Yep. I tried to sign. Are you serious? I swear. Remember you performed I for LA? I never knew that. Remember you performed for LA at the fourth, was it the fourth season or was it St. Regis? Remember you came to the. I do remember that. Yeah, that was me that said that. Yeah. Man, for real. Come on, man. That's crazy, right? <laughs> Bruh, I, I will follow you for a while because I wanted you to manage me. No, I, I did. Ain't, ain't gonna tell what. I kind of felt away for a minute. Really? That you didn't want to manage nah, me. Nah, I tried to sign you. I didn't even know that that was an option. I gotta talk to TJ. Because he never told me you were trying to sign me. That's what you came for. I was trying to sign you. Yeah. Oh my God. Come That's on, man. crazy, man. It's, it's, listen, it was, it's all God's time, and now here we are. Now we're here. We and are. I'm in your house. Now look. It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so I want I'm gonna get into some personal stuff, man. I Let's feel go. like I hear a whole lot of the Ray business side. Yeah. But before we get into all that, okay. I want I wanna know, and I'm sure people wanna know, like who is the who is the Ray Daniels that we don't know? Not not the music Ray. But like, how did you get into the music business? Who are you? I saw you last last night. You was saying word for word. Yeah. On yeah. I, I grew you up a street on that. kid. I grew up on that. You a street kid. I grew where up you, on where that. You went to school at? Bannica High School. Hey, Southside. South 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 I didn't. I heard you talking last yeah. night, and you told somebody that. Yeah, I went to Bannica, and I graduated from Open Campus. I'm from yeah. here, man. Yeah, Fred McLaren. Fred McLaren. Ah! Yeah. Me too. Me too. Me too. You know, I tell people. We the bad kids. That's what I tell people. No, no, I remember over campus. I, was saying, I, said, I tell people, I'm like, I had a, I had a daycare center in my class, in my school. Yeah, we sure did yeah, for the, the pregnant girl, wow. the pregnant yeah. um, teenager. And, um, yep. what that is, Scott Hill. No, 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 that's not Scott Hill. No, 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 College Park. Right across from College Park, Park. Park. Right Park train campus too. Yeah, right across from College Park. They had one in Scott Hill too. Though. I was called Frank McLaren. Frank McLaren, yep. Right across the street from the College Park train station. Okay, so how did you get it over campus? 
Being well, bad. that's being bad. Being bad. Being nah, bad. man, don't tell me. Okay, okay, okay. Man. No, no, she's trying to ask him. Who I interviewed later? Okay, you, okay, okay. How did you get in over here? I'm glad I'm saying this because my son is sitting right there. I didn't take, I didn't take school serious because no one told me I could be anything. So I just was kind of there having a good time. And then one day they told my mom I wasn't going to graduate on time. Uh, and I think that's what made my mom just really kind of just check out on me as a, a human. Like, oh, I don't know what you're going to be. So I just, I just, be, where can I, going to school at Open Campus changes you. Like, it do. when you graduate, you know, number one, they don't, when you go to Open Campus, you, you don't have to sit in class. Oh, the teacher wow. doesn't teach. Yeah. They give you a packet. And you got to do your packet on your own. And if you have questions about the packet, you got to ask the teacher. But they're not teaching a lesson. But that's backwards, though. Well, right? you're, well you're behind. So technically, they let you go at your pace. So if you can work and get a, 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 if you can get through a, a lesson in four days and it takes me 40 days, they're not going to stop you. Mm. And then once you graduate, you walk the halls. Yeah, you walk the halls. You walk the halls. The halls. So they tell, so they, tell, they, tell every, they announce, Ray Daniels has completed all of his credits to get his high school diploma. Everybody go out in the hallway, and they put on a cap and gown. Yeah. And you got to walk through the hallway, and, and your students clap for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I mean, I can't believe that that was my life. But, <laughs> yeah. I can't either, though. I can't either. Seeing you now and just the mindset you have. Everybody tells me they thought, every, you know how many people come to me and tell me, like, I just know you was a smart kid. I wasn't, cause being smart wasn't cool. So it wasn't. I just and no one. I always tell this to people. If you wanna know how I came up with who I am, I look at it like this: when 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 it's school time, they invest in only about three or four sets of students. They invest in the athletes. They invest in all of the musically inclined kids, um, and they invest in all of the really really smart kids. And they kind of spend a little bit more investment on the dumber kids, too. Right. Like them kids that don't leave the classroom. Right. They, they live. I see Jay. Jay was a classmate of mine. He went to school with me. Um, and then it's like the other 85% of us is just left to figure life out. Yeah. And when I realized that, that I was part of 85%, that's because I don't think that when you see a janitor, we don't ever ask ourselves, how did they become a janitor? Like, no one wants to be a bus driver. No one wants to be a janitor. These are jobs that you eventually take because it's the best option based on what you are in life. Right. So once I knew that the options, once I looked at the options in front of me, like work at Delta, go to the Army, something like that, I was like, I don't want neither one of those. I think I could right. do something with my life. Mm. I just need a purpose. And somebody asked me to help him with some music, and here I am. Who asked you to help him with some music? A classmate. This kid I went to school with, he flagged me down, and he said, man, since we've been kids, since we were in the seventh grade, when you talk, people listen. If you talked about what I'm doing, I think we might be able to make a whole lot of money. And I was like, I guess so. Let's try it. And then... Here I am. That was like 2000, 2002. Is, this, is that somebody that we know? Nah, he didn't make it. Really? And that also taught me a lot because, like, imagine if, like, so imagine we have grills with Scotty, right? Grills like Scotty. Mm -hmm. uh, and someone wants to come in here and to be in a grill business. And they say, like, 22, 23. And you got people around you who's been around you since they was 18. That person is four mm -hmm. to five years behind those people. So I, was, I came in the music business at 22, trying to be in it at 22. Like, I, I give it to you like this. Ethiopia and me are a week apart. But Ethiopia was interning at LaFace when she was 14, 16. So, so think about how many years she got ahead of me. Right. So I'm late to the party. So me working like I was late to the party is what really got me here because I didn't cheat the process and I knew I needed to learn as much as I needed to learn because it's not like I'm an artist. Like, when you're an artist, you don't have to know nothing. You just got to just know your skill. But when you do what I do, you got to know something when you right. open your mouth. So I just... Learn as much as I could learn, and then I realized people wasn't learning. That's what threw me off. Like, people who I looked up to couldn't give me nothing after a certain point. So even now, I'm a growing person. Like, where I'm at right now, I'm way smarter today than I was yesterday. No, and I'll be yeah. way smarter tomorrow because I'm dedicated to the, 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 the work that it takes to do what we do. Yeah. Nah, and it pays man. off. Yeah. You know what? And I'm going to tell y'all something. And I'm telling y'all something. And I'm saying this with love. It never stops. Cause I ain't gonna lie to you, I've been working my behind off hopefully that it stops one day. Mm. And then it's like, I gotta show up and prove myself again. The next and again, day. And, I'm, and I ain't gonna lie, some days I'll be like, damn. I want like, to like, I get, And then you gotta look at it something like this. Michael Jordan is, was probably the greatest basketball player that ever played, my son disagrees, but that's cool, right? But I my, agree with him. But, my, but my, point, my, point is, is that, my point is is that once he was over with his NBA, he could have dwelled on just being Michael Jordan the NBA player. No, he went on to buy a team. Now he's richer than he ever has been. He's focused on building his business. Because after the NBA, there's still life. Yeah. And that's what I had to learn. Once I learned that, that the journey doesn't stop, it's like life just became it's beautiful to me. Because okay. I just stopped yeah. worrying about winning and I just started worrying about 
committing to learning how to win better and different every day. What's up, y'all? This your girl, Erica Duchess, and I'm in the green room with Dutch Lee. Oh, Dutch. What's up, y'all? I'm here now with my partner, comedian slash trapper slash some more things. My boy thought I won. And Juan, you had some questions for Ray Daniels. Yeah, Ray, I want to know, uh, in your career, what was the moment when you realized you made it? Cause I've been trying to make it for a long time. When in my career did I feel like I made it? Uh, I ran into a whole lot of money and I sat my family down. I announced my retirement and I gave all the family, I think I gave like $100,000 to my family. Like gave everybody checks, like I'm retiring, here's my retirement gift to y'all. And then after everybody got the money, I, su I said now I'm coming out of retirement and now I'm doing it for me. And I've been doing it for me and my family ever since, you know? So I would say that's probably a day I feel like I made it. But I mean, my perspective honestly is, is every day you wake up, you made it. Because there's somebody that ain't gonna get a chance to wake up and there's somebody gonna wish, get a chance to do it again. And perspective is everything. So I made it because Scotty has me here. Let's go. Y'all make some noise for Ray Daniels, yeah. man. What's up? Yeah. All right. So Ray, I, I, I feel like this is like, me and you, but I got to ask you, sure. right? Okay. So, I, I'm not going to lie, bro. It's sometimes you could kind of come off like a little asshole. Mm. You're a little asshole. Absolutely. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but, 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 not, but let me tap in. But let me tap in, though. Let me tap in, though. I like that. That's one of the reasons why I rock with you. And sometimes people say, I can come off like an asshole, too. But I want you to explain. What's the science behind that? Cause I, I feel you, like I got an idea what I want I'm to do. Okay, so I'm glad you asked that question. Come on, right? please. So, so here's the thing. When you have, everybody has to embrace their role in life. Um, I, it bothered me to be viewed as an asshole until I saw backstage documentary and they did the scene on Dame. And everybody said, Dame's an asshole, Dame's an asshole. He even claimed that he was an asshole. And then you realize that doesn't, I don't mind being an asshole to you because if I was an asshole to you, that means you try to take advantage of me. Mm. Have I been an asshole to you? Never. Nigga, because I don't feel you on it. You just come Never. in with something. But right. if I see you coming, if I see you trying to take from my tree or from my whatever I have, you're going to get an asshole. And my thing is, you might get an asshole until I see you not trying to take. So for me, because in my mind, it's like sometimes, sometimes people take advantage of the weak. People take advantage of weak. So sometimes you got, not even sometimes, you always got to present yourself as strong in business and in life and in anything, especially as a man. Right. Because if you don't, they'll take advantage of you. Man, I'm Ain't nobody going to play with me or mine. I wish you 100%. I just, I just can't let it happen. So if you say I was an asshole, that means I probably was trying to get, you was probably trying to get over on us and I ain't let that shit happen. Real but, talk. And, if you, I mean, and to me, it's like, I feel like I've been getting it less and less and less because I just, I can see it coming now. So now it's like, oh, I mean, I could read, man. I mean, I don't think people, that's what, the, that's what I would always say to anybody. It's weird how we don't see ourselves. Yeah. We see everybody, but we don't you see ourselves. You demand respect. Come on. You and demand I, respect, and, But I demand it by giving it at the highest, most utmost level I could do. I walk in here, I shake everybody's hand, I speak to everybody. I do that all the time. Because I got to remember, you have a perception of me. That's yeah. what people don't understand. Just because somebody don't say, what's up, Dutch, don't mean we don't know what Dutch is. You know what I'm saying? Like, just somebody whisper, oh, that's Dutch, that man, that's Dutch. We be knowing, so they be looking to see, do he think he all that? Mm. He think he the shit, don't he? Nah, man, what's up, how y'all doing? Now, if you come trying to talk. You handling business. Nah, it's different. Right. It's different. So that's what I would say. Okay. Now, now piggybacking out that, and I, for me, the reason why I think, because I'm into the asshole attitude a little bit, too. <laughs> for a minute, now, I'm going to keep a G with you. I'm going to tell you how I got into it. <laughs> tell me. I pull up to the radio station, I'm 30 minutes early. Say be at 4 o'clock, I'm there at 3.30. I'm sitting outside, hot, night, hot 107.9. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sitting outside while I see two, three people walk in. Yeah. Right? I'm in the locker room getting snacks, me and my partner, Chef Marlo in here somewhere, he'll tell you. Being thankful. Get what? I watch them run over me. Then I start watching cats that I admire, and I'm like, 
This dude don't give a fuck. He don't take no shit. The people that they was letting in the radio station first, them niggas were late. Period. I was on time, but it was a respect thing. Period. And so in my mind, I had to switch how I saw myself. That's why I salute you. That's why, and that, by the way, let's clap for that because it's something very important. It's, it's something. It's something very important. We, I saw this, and I'm, I'm going to give credit to this guy. This guy named Howard Suber. He said something. He said, when you say you want to change the world, what you're really saying is that you want to change your interactions with the world. That all comes Come on, from man. you, though. Like, Real it comes talk. from you. If you show up, like, it'd be funny. Sometimes people might say something to me, and I don't know if they catch it. But if you say something to me, you might say something, give me a compliment or say something like, oh, like, Ray, you smell good. My response is, like, it's not thank you. It's like, I'm supposed to. Ooh. The character that I committed to playing is supposed to smell good. Right. The character I am, I'm committed to playing is supposed to look and dress a certain way. Because right. I've committed to the character I am. That's lit. Period. Like, it's like, so for me, it's like, I just tell everybody, commit to the character. A lot of, a lot of our problem is, is that we different characters in every scene, in every setting, in every movie scene. I'm, this, I'm, I'm committed to the character. Consistency. You know, I tell people, I say... They always say, well, we, we always talk about the 3%, right? And then we talk about the 97%, right? But the 3%, the elite, right? They have something in common. They've accepted who they are to the world, and they've committed to that. Meanwhile, the other 97% is whatever the world calls for today. So I'll give you an example. Like, I'll use two successful people. Mm -hmm. Because people take one is wrong. You have givers and you have takers, right? 97% of us are givers and takers, right? right? We givers and takers, right? We probably take from our job and give to other people, whatever it is we, you do. So what I decided was, so, but if you're giving and taking, that means you're going this way, you're going that way. You're going this way, you're going that way. You're never going to get all the way over there, and you're never going to get all the way over there. Mm. So for me, I just had to ask myself, who am I? Am I a giver or am I a taker? And whoever I am, I have to decide to be that. And I decide I'm a giver. So when people get over on me or people think they came to my table and just took, I'm like, you so stupid, I was giving that to you. But you done showed me who you are. Right. It's like, it's I like, was giving that to you. But All you had to do was really show up with a good attitude. It's like, it's like I learned everything from movies. It's this movie, I know it's a lot of young people in here, but it's a movie called Trading Places. It started yeah. Eddie Murphy, Eddie classic Murphy, movie. My favorite you movie. Class, it's one of, but it's a scene in Trading Places where they bring Eddie character to the house and they tell him, this is yours now. Yeah. So Eddie is like, this is my house? And he was like, yeah, this is your house. So he's like, he was like, so that's mine over there. And they look over there, and they have snatched something to put in his pocket. Because yeah. he was naturally a thief. Mm, stealing from himself. He was, but they, they had to say to him, you're just stealing from yourself. Ooh. Then he goes to say, I'm sorry for not believing y'all, because shit like this happened to me every day. Yeah. Wow. That's when it hits them. Now you got to tell them why you're doing it. Because wow. now he ain't going to buy into you know why. So for me, I think about those things. I'm like, I'm a giver. So there have been people that have came and got for me. Right. There have been people, there have been, there have been people right now who are talking shit about me wearing my clothes mm -hmm. that I gave them, mm -hmm. who's talking shit about me with a car that I helped them get. And the reason why I'm okay with that is because I've committed to the role of a giver. You it just don't took, matter. It just, you just took, and you're probably going to take today and give tomorrow, but I'm going to, the more I give, the more I get. Yeah. Like, the more, like, so I give you an example. God blessing you. I'll give you an and example. You of but I want to say something because I don't want people to I don't want people to take takers as bad. It's right. it's just more what works for you. I give an example of two giver a giver and a taker, both successful. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama and President Trump. Obama's a giver. President Trump's a taker. Yeah. They still became president, whether y'all like it or be. not. Right. Ooh, that's deep. They still became be. president whether you like it or not. Like so that. however yeah. you feel about them, doesn't matter. They have right. committed to the role. So if you like takers, you're gonna fuck with Trump. If you like givers, you're going to fuck with Obama. Right. And we see that there are a lot of people who are both. That's why the pendulum swings either way. Mm. Well, now they voted for Trump. Oh, he's giving us now. Okay, now we're going to vote for him. Oh, now he's taking it. And it's like, for me, it's like, I am committed to who I am no matter what. Yeah, I don't right. care who you are. I'm here to give to the world. If you, anybody need information from me, I'm here to give it to you. If anybody need anything from me, I'm here to give it to you. But because I'm a giver, you can't make me feel bad for not giving you a million when I only want to give you a dollar. Mm. Ooh. I'm a giver. I don't but think you, you deserve a million, but I get to decide what I give. That's real. That's how I look at it. So Andy there it is. Make some noise one time for right now. What's up, man? I'm okay, to, so I'm going to tell you real quick, real quick. I got my first grill, 14 years old, at the Old National Discount Mall. 
For real? Old National Discount. We was on Old National last night. What? Old National Discount. Well, I got my first girl. It cost me $50. For real? And it fell down the drain. No. And it, I was so, I, I needed that money, man. You ain't never go to Eddie's? I, I, got, I got it from somebody. You know, I was, man, I was a broke kid, man. I went to the bootleg people in the mall. I feel you, though. I couldn't go to Eddie's. That's when, that's when Middleman was working there. Nah, we're going to get you right today. Let's I'm going to give you a I want to do a Scotty. Right. Let's go. Signature. Okay, what, so what you got in mind, man? I had a thought in mind of what I think you should get. I want you to call you? a shot. I don't want to have no say-so in it. Okay, it's the bar. You know, you, you put the line across the top. Okay. Huh? You got one on one side, one on the other side. And I think you should put a little color on one side and a little color on the other side. What you think? Yes, sir. Green and blue, though. Green, green on one side, blue on the I other side. I want to attract the money and blue skies. Ooh. All right, let's do it. Let go. All right, I'm going to mold you up, man. It'll take one minute. Let go. Just relax. All right, we're doing the bottom, right? Mm-hmm. All right, cool, man. Mold you up real quick. Your son ever had a grill? I ain't got a son, man. My son, is, my son is from the, he is the different generation. <laughs> he don't wear grills? Son don't even know what welfare is. He don't even know. He don't even know what food stamps is. He don't never heard of it in his life. What? Ain't y'all y'all working on some stuff too, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It. I'm trying to teach his ass what real life is like. Ah. Uh. So I made him do the podcast. <laughs> now he has to listen to it at least an hour every week. Y'all about to do y'all own podcast? We did. It, yeah, it's called Three G's. Oh, that's hard. Me, him, and my uncle. It's like three generations. Oh, that's hard, man. That's it's like, super. It's dope. like my version of the Cosby Show. Never been done before. Never been done before. Just family, just talking about man stuff and everything. Let's go. All right. Pull your bottom lip down a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, open. Bite. Stay like that. Don't talk. Don't move your mouth side to side. Okay. All right. You go, just a Researchers say that there are 19 different smiles, but it's two of them that you need to pay attention to: sincerely felt and socially polite. Listen, don't come around me with no fake smiles. This is your smile fan for the day. Scotty is here. Grizz by Scotty. Let's get it. So, boom! I met you in the studio, or that's when I—that's when I remember that time. Mm -hmm. Then, for a minute, I feel like we lost touch. Yep. We lost contact. I didn't see you. Yep. I don't know where you was at, whatever. But after the pandemic, I feel like you came back like it's a new Ray Daniels. I I came back a new Ray because I gave something to my, my, my business. I wrote a letter called Dear White Executives. I wanted to give white people in the music business a perspective on what it's like to be a black person. I wanted to explain to them, because this was around George Floyd thing happened where now you got white people like, black friends, are y'all OK? And all the black people are like, are we OK? We've been seeing, I, I remember being a little kid watching Rodney King get his ass whipped and watch yeah. police get off. Right. This is normal to us. That's crazy. So when they started saying, because I guess the George Floyd thing happened and they finally get to see, because you know, maybe people need evidence. I saw that, so then they was like, it was like white people was like nice to us in the music business, which was weird to us, because during seen, that time, you already know how it's going, Gina. You know how it is. They how treat us like, they treat us how they, well, how, based on how they need us. So they was right. nice to us. So I'm like, why are they so nice? Then it was because of George Floyd. And then they was like, how can we help? How can we be better partners to our black counterparts? And I was like, and nobody said nothing. Nobody said a word. And I was like, OK. And I was like, nobody's not going to say nothing black. If somebody came in here right now, so I'm going to give everybody black in here, if y'all shut the fuck up, we going to all shut the fuck up. Because mm. we're not used to getting. We've always been second class in this country. So I was just trying to explain to even though I am not second class in a society, in the music business, I'm second class. Ah. You see what I'm trying to so, say? So you was almost um, creating your own destiny. I, I, was, no, I was. I didn't know that. I was telling them, hey, guys, here's what it's like to be black. Oh, and with your part, with well, the God show? No, this is before the God show. OK. I did a, I did a letter. The and, letter. And then I became public enemy number one to the music business because I spoke up. Hold on. What was this letter at? You it, sent it, it to people? No, it was, on, it was on the cover of Billboard magazine. So it was a what? big deal. Yeah, it was, it was a big deal on the music business. But what happened was I became the enemy. And I didn't understand it because I wouldn't have volunteered that information if y'all didn't ask. Y'all was trying to figure out why the black people won't talk. Well, shit, I'm a free nigga. I can tell you why the niggas who ain't free ain't talking. I live in Atlanta, nigga. I go home to a, I go, y'all can't fucking kill me. Let's go. I go to Atlanta. Let's I'm sorry. Go. I'll be like that. I'm just being honest with you. Like, yeah. like y'all need half a million dollars a year here in LA to live an average life. I can live like a king in Atlanta for 200,000 a year. Right. So I'm not leaving. 
Yeah, and I'm bad. from here, so I feel safe here. So I wrote it, became the enemy, and then I got done dirty in my last situation. But I thought I, I was too good. I made that company too much money. And I don't believe if you're good at something, you should ask for permission to do it. Mm. I don't believe if you're great at something, you should ask somebody that you're greater than for permission to do it. So, wow. so this letter basically inspired the God Show. The letter was, the letter is the reason why I'm right here I am today. That letter was the before and after of my career. Wow. Because before, I didn't realize that white people in the music business didn't see me as black. I was clear. I was, they knew I was black, but I was clear. I wasn't black. I wasn't You Dr. was Umar. one of them, but you wasn't one of them. Yeah. And now when yeah. I figured that part out, I just went and did it. So, Dang, I so you when I so like you was playing playing for them, that's why, but you nah, wasn't. I, that's why the God Show is such a big. Y'all can't tell me nothing no more, because I was working at a label. I was great, dog. Let me tell you something. When you work at a label, anybody that knows this, that have noticed, when you work at a label and you got a contract, usually six months before your contract is up, they tell you if they're gonna resign you or if they're gonna let you go. Right? That's what they do. Right. They didn't tell me until three days before my contract is up because for the last nine months they told me a contract was coming. So for nine months they said, Ray's contract is coming, we're taking care of him. Then three, then three days before, days before. they was like, we ain't, it ain't coming no more. Why do you think they did that? Because they needed to get me, they needed to handicap me. Because now I got to focus on big picture shit because now I can't focus on how you did me. So now I'm sitting down, I ain't going to lie, I drove home crying every night. I believe. Every night I cried because I couldn't Ooh. believe that I let that happen to me. And not only that, I'm the best at what I do. Dang. So... I remember saying, like, you know what? I'm going to talk to the internet. And I remember when I worked at my last situation, every time I was signing an artist or ran into a rapper, they always wanted to meet one person. Can you introduce me to Gary Vee? And it was weird to me. Because I'm like, why do y'all want to know Gary Vee? He don't know nothing about music. I wanted to know Gary Vee. But that's my point. But why did Gary Vee is a giver? Right. He's built a relationship with everyone because anybody who's anybody can get information from him. So I said, that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to just talk about everything that I know. And I swear to God, I'm not lying. I did it because I wanted another job. I figured, wow. if I, I figured if you want to show you, you, you can't complain that you're not on a team, just show them you're practicing. Right. Yeah. And then I developed an audience, and I didn't expect that. Wow. Was there a point in time that you felt like you was alone? Hell yeah. Shit, I feel like I'm alone right now. That's why I take my family with me everywhere I go, because there ain't nobody realer than them. Wow. I, I, I'd rather roll my family, I'm being honest. Because you know, cause, because my biggest problem with the music business, my biggest problem with our culture, my biggest problem with black people is that we will laugh at you behind your back instead of telling you to your face you're doing something wrong. And that to me fucks with me because it's like, nigga, if I'm doing something wrong, tell me. Right. Nigga, I was, I, was, I was in an event three weeks ago. I took a picture. Troy Taylor whispers to my ear, stand up straight when you take pictures from now on. It what? makes you like your posture bad. Yeah. Damn, I never thought about that. Okay, I stand up straight now. Why the hell? He ain't tell me nothing wrong. I ain't He's too good. To help you out, I ain't too yeah. good for somebody to give me advice on how to be better. I don't care who it comes from. Criticism. I just want to win, bro. I don't want to be right. I want to win. And I feel like if we get out of our way, we'll be fine. That's yeah. why I started talking. Yeah. Okay, God show. My favorite guest so far. I'm sure you got your favorite guest. My favorite guest, you know who I'm going to say. Dame. Dame Dash. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to keep it real. I love Dame. I'm going to keep it Dame real. I Dame and him, too. I love Dame, too. He in the asshole game. King asshole. <laughs> fuck with He's king asshole. But how was it working with him? Um, it was incredible because I'll tell you a funny story. So I did. So when I wanted to interview Dame, the people who flew him into town was like, you'll interview him, but on one condition that he gets to interview you. And I'm like, he wants to interview me? Okay. And when we sat down to interview, he didn't even introduce me. He was like, yeah, I'm saying, talking to my man, tell me your name. So I'm like, this nigga don't even know my name. Uh, so, so I do the interview with him, and then he leaves. He's like, yo, I got to do yours tonight, right? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'll see you tonight. And he came in, and I was in a meeting, but when he came in, you know, he was walking around my studio. You've been in my studio yeah, before. Yeah. And he was knocking on walls. Like, like who, 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 who studio is this? They was like, Ray. So he's like, this his? Well, who? He was like... His. So at that moment is when he kind of was like, oh, so you a boss. And then immediately he liked me. Mm. My point is, is that he saw me attempting. That's what I mean by like, sometimes you don't have to do, you just got to try to do. Right. And after that moment, we became cool. And then my co-host at the time, I, he was trying to defend Steve Stout and it just went really bad. But the one thing that I liked about Dame, and I think that we all should do this, is we should give each other grace. 
because people are not mad for some not no reason. People are not angry for no reason. And when you sit down and hear what Dame is saying, everybody get tired of, gets tired of hearing the same story. But imagine if you built a billion dollar empire Ooh. with somebody, and then at some point in time you got take got kicked off of it, and you just felt like it didn't sit well with you. Bro. Make some noise for Ray Dane one more time, please. Yeah. Can, can I right. ask Ray something? Okay. You know, this this a new generation. For sure. A lot of people don't know you. Like, Scotty, can you give people like this new generation, this new, this new era of rappers, new artists that don't we know he a legend. Right. We know. Can I, but can you get Can I jump in? Yeah, jump in. I'd rather not do that. And I'm gonna tell you why. Tell me. Because if you need to know who I am to take what I'm saying serious, you're not gonna win anyway. That's right. That's right. That's right. I never tell people what I do or what I am or whatever it is. When you if you are, that's what I want y'all to understand. A lot of us, a lot of our problems is that we want everybody. I want one out of 100. If I get one out of 100, I got 36 million people in America that's messing with me. If I that's get true. one out of 100, why are we that's worrying true. about 100 out of 100? A talk, true. attract your stuff, like, and the people that's there for is that everybody in here watches a TV show, watches a movie, is wearing clothes that y'all identify with or y'all connect with. Right. All I do is put my brand out there, and if you connect with it, you do it. If you don't, the best part about me is that I don't need you to connect for my family to eat. We're doing just fine because I am really good at what I do on the music side. Nah, no doubt. All right, look, I got two more questions. Okay. We're going to get out of here. Um, brother, um, producer, inspiration, Rico Wade. Man. Mm -hmm. What does Rico mean to you? Well, tell me a story about, you know, a time. Like Rico. You know, I worked with Rico when I worked at Epic. I've been hearing Rico name, Rico Wade name since I was 14. That's crazy. Banneker High School, ninth grade year. You, yep. you, you play his ball drop. I'm a freshman in high school. And Rico Wade was like, and I'm from College Park. Rico, they was in East Point. So, you know, yeah. we brothers and sisters, basically. Yeah. So you, you heard about him. And then when you met him, he didn't let you down. He, he lived up to the hype. He's a giver. Rico, to me, is like what I'm trying to be. He's a giver. He gave to everyone. And to me, I feel like there's Rico has contributed just as much to Atlanta. It's two people that I think are the biggest contributors to Atlanta. Three, I'm going to say. Rico Wade, Jermaine Dupri, and Dallas Austin. Mm. Yeah. I think those three guys mm. are the architects of it. For Atlantis, obviously right. LA and Face came here. Right. They was from, you know, Cincinnati and um, Indianapolis, where they were from. But Rico was an Atlantan, right? Yeah. So, bro, he was a legend. He was our Russell. He was the first. He was our Dr. Dre. I mean, he produced the greatest group of all time, and he gave us one of the greatest groups of all time, a Goody Mob, and he gave us TLC, and he gave us Kilo. I mean, dog. So many things. Dog. Yeah. Crazy, man. And the one thing that he didn't do that I feel like is the one thing that hurts Atlanta, and I tell this to everybody, is I just told us to Sleepy and them last night at the Killer Mike, at your, at yeah. the event we was at last yeah. night. I'm like, Atlanta's problem is, is that we don't ask for the credit. New York won't let you do shit without reminding you it came from them. Yeah. You're right. And Atlanta we just, we, that, though. but we, we too good, we, we're too loving, but that doesn't mean that we should not do brag a little bit more because like even though I, door, I can't believe y'all y'all don't you know what though and and I hate to say this but it, it took Rico to pass away for me to really kind of understand how much he affected I saw so much Instagram and just the city being affected I knew he was an inspiration yeah. I knew that but just to see like how much he did let, let me get an example I of, cried for two let days me, let me man. get let me get an example of who Rico Wade is and he's also one of the reasons why I'm able to be here because my guys Rock City were living in Atlanta and they ran out of money. And they were they didn't have money anyway, but they was like, we run out of money. So they was a part of the Dungeon family. But they wasn't signed. So they go to Rico and say, yo, Rico, we about to leave to go to Virgin Islands and go work and get out, get our money up. We'll be back. And Rico's like, y'all can't leave. And he was like, what are we supposed to do? He said, Y'all are gonna, I swear to God, he said, Y'all are gonna save the music business. Y'all can't leave. How much money y'all need for y'all rent for the rest of the year, for the next Dang. 12 months? And Rico Wade paid their rent for 12 months. Wow. Never signed them, Dang. never did nothing. That's who he is. So imagine how many people he's done that for yeah. that are not telling those stories. Man. And, to so me, solid, and, and to man. me, I think that that's what we got to do. If we're not going to brag on ourselves, let's brag on our peers. Man, I right, clap it up, please, man. Yep.
Man, you gonna make me cry. I'm interviewing you, man. <laughs> hey, look, uh, this is my last question, man. I want to know of a time you had on Edgewood that was a special time or a special moment that you can remember. Man, that's a good question. Oh, Edgewood. So when I think about Edgewood, I got to think about my best friend that passed away. Uh, shout out to Jamal Slow Pride. That was my best friend. I don't know if anybody ever knew him, but if you knew me in 2013, but prior, you knew Slow. That was my bro dog. Everybody when he was with me. Um, and we used to just come to Edgewood because Atlanta started developing its own, like, creative, like, I, I want to say coaching, Holly Weird and those guys that created that, like, that scene of, like, that underground Atlanta scene. Group fly. Yeah, yeah, all of those guys, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, two nine, all those, it was like yeah. that creative stuff. Yeah. And I, I think that I remember being on here and just, like, tripping out with Slow, Bame Joyner, Nick Love, and Ian... Um, Paul Ford, who those guys are actually Atlanta influences everything now. Right. But we was wow. trying to create a creative agency, and we would just be out here, and we was watching the changes about Atlanta happening to us because it became very different around that time. So I just remember coming on Edgewood, and Edgewood was the place where you're gonna see everybody. You're gonna see a politician. You're gonna see crackheads. You're gonna see artists. You're gonna see at Edgewood is Atlanta, Georgia. Right. Yeah. Like you gonna see it, is. it really the is at the heart of but I'm saying but like the people, like right. if you wanna know what Atlanta is, sit on Edgewood on a Friday night. That's so crazy see, though. That's us. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you why that's crazy that you saying that. And and it's really the first time it connected to me is that when you say Edgewood is Atlanta, like when we when we say where we from, you say, Well I'm from the west side. Yep. Or I'm from the east side. Yeah. But to hear where we didn't came from, even just as a, a community, Atlanta, a city, yeah. like everybody come together in one spot. Gentrification. Yep. It ain't just all black on Edgewood. Nah, it's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. everybody. It's, it's, so to me, it's like I would say that's what it is. Edgewood is like a, and I'm glad you're here because you are a cultural icon in our city, and it's like when you go to LA, it's like you know this is gonna be what Nipsey store is. Wow. Where well, you gotta come on Edgewood. And you gotta go take a picture in front of the Scotty Grill store. Right. That's what so, this is. That's how I feel. So for me, it's like Edgewood is the best place to be. And you know, it's us, man. It's Atlanta. If you wanna know who we are, come here. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, please make some noise for Ray Daniels, man. Please. Yeah. This episode was brought to you by. 